It's a monster typhoon, I think. Yung inano ko lang dun, yung Yolanda kasi, yung typhoon Yolanda, parang nabibase ko siya na parang hugutan na to. Parang kung swerte ka, mabubuhay ka. Pag malas ka, malas ka. Kukunin ka talaga. Parang dun, uh, monster talaga tong ano. Parang dragon. <laughs> yung Yolanda, compared to dragon. Hindi ko po nakita yung pagdating po ng alon sa dagat kasi po nasa Central School po kami. Medyo malayo po yun dito sa, sa may dagat. So ang aking na lang po nakita ay eh, akala po namin tubig alat na po siya kasi nalalasahan na po namin yung tubig. So nung dumating po yung tubig, natatakot na po lahat ng mga tao, lalo, lalo na po kami kasi kasama ko po yung baby boy ko. Eh, apat na bes, tatlong beses na po ako nakakunan. So... Yung pang-apat ko pong anak, eh, natutakot po talaga ako nung lumating po yung tubig. Sabi ko sa mga kasama ko, tubig na, tubig! Tapos ayaw pa nilang buksan yung pintuan kasi pag lumabas daw kami, nagliliparan daw yung mga sim, baka daw matamaan kami. Sabi ko, hindi, dapat lumabas tayo kasi... Pag tumas yung tubig, may mga bata tayo at ako hindi rin ako marunong lumangoy. Paano na tayo mamamatay tayo dito? So hanggang dito na yung tubig, iiyak na talaga ako na. The uh, typhoon Haiyan, Yolanda, was quite unique in the sense that uh, no, uh, uh, we, we have grown in the Philippines dealing with typhoons. But when I saw for myself, you know, the... Uh, the effect, you know, the day it hit, I was watching television, I could not believe. I thought I had seen already all the, uh, all the typhoons that could be seen, but I said, wow, we are entering a new phase, a new phase where our daily existence, especially of the vulnerable uh, along the co coastal uh, areas, could not be presumed anymore. Hindi ko na po nakita yung bahay namin kasi po nung nung napumunta po kami sa lo dati namin lugar, tubig na po siya, wala na pong bahay na nakatayo. As in wala na naging lawa na po yung tinitirikan ng bahay. So nalungkot po kami kasi ngayon po <laughs> yung tinitirahan po namin, tela, mainit, sa higpo, plastic. Madali pong hapyatin ng mga insekto, lalo po ng mga daga. Madali pong mapasok ng tubig. So, ang init-init po sa loob. Kumbaga po, kung sa tinapay po, para po kami nasa pugon, kung papasok po doon sa loob. Hindi po namin kaya kung manatili ng isang oras o ilang segundo po sa loob kasi para po kami iniihaw. Parang wala, na, wala po kami idea noon eh kung paano po kami hihingin tulong. Development and Peace Caritas Canada responds immediately to Typhoon Haiyan, and Canadians give generously in support of relief efforts. With 25 years' experience in the Philippines, Development and Peace calls on its longtime partners like UPA, the Urban Poor Associates, and PETA, the Philippine Educational Theatre Association, to go beyond regular disaster response and give power to the powerless. This is the journey of 550 families that rebuild their community and transform their lives with support from development and peace.
Jolie Torella is a community organizer with Urban Poor Associates. He arrives in Tacloban with colleague Jessa Margallo four months after the storm to work with poor coastal communities that have lost everything and are at risk of eviction. Basically, I, I saw depression when the moment I stepped in here in Tacloban. The trauma is still there. When it, it, it shows when you ask them uh, about what happened to Yolanda. Tears are still pouring in. They are living in the no-build zone, so their houses are, it's either tent or shanties. Uh, shanties uh, means that they, they got their uh, housing materials from uh, salvage materials. So they got it uh, on the streets. So their living condition is very poor. The typhoon doesn't only destroy uh, properties like uh, houses, uh, livelihood. It also destroys the structure in the community. So community organizing hopes to bring it back, so the structure in the community. <laughs> We want to differentiate this between community organizing and community participation because both governments and many humanitarian organizations, they keep on saying, uh, okay, let's, uh, you know, let's consult with the people. Uh, you know, let's bring the people together. And that's already called community participation. But in our case, you know, the, the people are actually uh, not only being organized, but are actually in charge of relief distribution, in charge of engaging the local government where the relief goods should be distributed, in charge of you know, engaging the government where the relocation should be uh, conducted. These are moments of very human uh, growth, you know, very humane, humane responses. But we have to be vigilant all the time. That's why local communities must be formed. You know? And they should get out of the, that mindset that we are here just to receive. They should uh, also be given uh, a, a fair share in the uh, management of the efforts to rebuild their lives. They must be consulted. The models of development and the rebirth must be uh, uh, according to their culture, to their, uh, their dreams, etc. And they should help monitor you know, uh, the efforts in their ground. Yung po, yung communal garden po namin, kasi nung time na yun, March po yata kami nag-start nun eh. Hirap-hirap po kami sa pagkain kasi yung relief goods nun eh, medyo papahinto na po siya. So nagplano po yung women's at ka kasama po yung UPA na bakit hindi tayo magtayo ng garden pang samantala. Parang, kasi kung magtatayo ng garden, may mayroon tayo makukulang ng pagkain. Naisip din namin, oo nga, bakit hindi? So nag-start po yung communal garden nag ano po kami naggabas tapos nag nakipag mobilization po kami sa DE makakuha kami ng libreng seeds yun po parang masaya po nang tumutubo na po yung mga halaman po namin eh nakakalibre po kami ng gastos <laughs> at wala po pong mga chemical na mga halo-halo kumbaga po sa communal garden po namin eh masasabi po namin safe yung mga nakakain namin kumbaga masarap pong kumain sa sa sariling sikap Yun po. <laughs> Ito po ay uh, mga, mga planting material para sa 
ating mga kam baboy, kambing. At ito rin ay pwede natin itanim doon sa Po Francis Village kasi malaki ang a component ng livestock doon. Sa ngayon, kung makikita po natin, ulilibutin po natin ng buong... Andito po ako ngayon sa Barangay 89, kung saan ito po isa sa pinakamalaking tent city dito sa Tacloban City. At ang inorganisa po namin dito ay manging isda, pedicab drivers, at saka women. No, hindi nila, hindi namin alam paano, na, paano kami makakahingi ng tulong sa gobyerno. Gobyerno yan, hindi kami, hindi kami pagbibigyan yan. So, kailangan ng pag-organisa, kailangan ng sama-samang pagkilos. Kailangan ng iisang boses at iisang kanta para marinig ng gobyerno kung ano ang kailangan nila. Yun po, ganun po yun. Naiyak po ako kasi um, matagal na po ako dito. Dumutilig sa amin, illegal daw yung aming mga ginagawa dahil, dahil, dahil parang minumulat namin, ang inagitate namin ang tao lumaban sa gobyerno. Pero hindi naman ganun. Ang tinuturo natin sa gobyerno, di, sa mga tao dito ay makipag-usap sa gobyerno para makuha ang kanilang mga karapatan. ba? Diba? Yung karapatan na nararapat para sa kanila, ba? Diba? So, ganun lang. So, yun po, masaya ako kasi hanggang ngayon, nandito pa ako, hindi pa ako sumusuko. So, kaya namin to, kaya namin. Kahit, nako, kahit ilang Yolanda pa, <laughs> diba? Wag naman sana, pero sana, yun, mga isa o dalawang taon, may balik na nila yung buhay nila, ma... Yung naturo namin sa kanila, may pamuhay nila hanggang sa, hanggang sa tumanda sila, hanggang may pasa na nila to sa kanilang mga anak, mga ina po. So, yun, kung gaano kahalaga ang pag-organisa. 18 months after the storm, poor communities are still stuck in tents. Faced with government inaction, development and peace helps to provide temporary housing. As you can see, there are so many development here. Uh, the people in tents are already transferred into a good house like this. So many partners uh, joined together to build uh, transit, at least transitory communities in where uh, they can live happily. And so it, it gives them dignity, actually, uh, unlike in tents. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. i to go to One after another uh, discussion with the government, they did not really produce any result that they cannot provide the land and the land that is available is so far from their livelihood. So we discussed with our partners, UPA, NASA, 
including the Redemptorists, were also working in that community. And, and, and uh, they said that really the only alternative right now is to find you know, a piece of land. But there are 300,000 people that, uh, you know, that are displaced. So what can we do? And in the area alone, there are over a thousand uh, families that uh, are living in the area where the UPA is organizing. So we said that, well, part of the work that we do is to provide example. Uh, part of the work that we do is to provide uh, a model no? that this is the way to go in terms of uh, uh, reconstruction, but also development, no? uh, the alternatives. So we said that if we're going to buy a piece of land, it would not just be a, a, a permanent shelter, but it would be integrated. That, and most of all, the people are fully in charge of that. After many setbacks, development and peace succeeds in buying land, just a few minutes from the city center. And the dream of a community-driven resettlement site is one step closer to reality. A visit from Pope Francis to Tacloban in January 2015 inspires the community to name the site the Pope Francis Village. So this part is included and also somewhere halfway through through the slopes of the mountains. It will be graded. And that one, if you can see the three electric posts, uh, that's also inside the site. So on the back of that, it's a steep, uh, steep cliff that's really around 90 degrees slope almost. I thought it was that simple. Choose a lot, rank it according to its geological hazards, and then, voila, you can purchase it. But it's not the case. There were a lot of negotiations that, that was done uh, with the owners and then with the transfer of titles and, and things like that. You have limited lots in Tacloban that are uh, basically free from, from geohazard. Actually, there are no lots in Tacloban that are free from geologic hazards. You can only have lots that have minimal or a geologic hazards or geologic hazards that can be mitigated. And another thing is that not all of the lands are up for sale. And that's another factor. And one factor is that some lots are being sold at a higher price and a price that is beyond the budget of the, the funders. It's really challenging. It's like, oh, how are we going to build houses considering this kind of terrain? How are we going to make a safer community on this land? But uh, I accepted the challenge because it's also a good thing for me <laughs> to go out of the comfort zone. Ito po ang aming report para sa Group 1. Ang aming napagkasunduan na sapong livelihood ay ang number 1 is rice retailer, botika, meat shop, food vending, fish vending, sari-sari store, parlor, bar and barber shop. Nandito yung health center namin. Kasi sinamasama na lang dito kasi wala nang space yung ano na ng Manila Painter. What we do is uh, we consult the community. Um, actually, it's a process. We conduct workshops to get their ideas, and then from that, we consolidate their ideas to come up with the design based on their design. It's not like we are the one who are imposing that, oh, you should have this one, so we don't do that. It's their uh, ideas that we just um, turn into official drawings 
but of course with the technical inputs included. Napansin nyo kung may translate sa taas at lahat kayo ay halos lahat nagsasabi na maaaring mapapasan yung pangalim sa landslide. Matigas na yung portasyon na yun. So, so, sa paggawa ng bahay dito, dito kailangan mo ikompa, kailangan mo pang bawasan yung slope ng konti. Dito, papantayin na lang Matatayin na yung bahay. So, kung yung kabahan na ito, tapos parang pinag-sayo, ito yung pishit, ito ang spin. Kailangan nyo na ba? Mag-report. 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 mag Oh. Dahil exposed naman siya masyado doon sa malalakas na hangin. Ito naman na ka-group mo ay ito kasi nila nga portion, delikado ito nila. Because landslide land, land prone ito niya. So kung pwede, ang black port, ibabalhin na ako. Kaya landslide prone ito, kung mag-inuran, magkatatabunan ito ng mga balay. Ito niya, Didi. Okay na ito, Didi. Group 6 po. Number two. Yeah! Group number three. Yeah! Group number four. Will you be sad to leave? May may part na ano? Pero yung konting part na lang kasi. Pero mas yung saya kasi may ma pupuntahan na kami mas magandang bahay. Para para rin naman yun sa mga pinamukasan ng mga anak namin. Mas magiging masaya sila doon. At last. Magkakabahay na ako. Yung dream house ko pa, kung ano yung gusto kong bahay, yun pa yung titerhan ko doon. Tinatanong kami kung ano yung mga dream house namin. So, everything is fair. Sinabi na namin, nila sa amin na yun, dapat pagdating doon, iba na. Kasi gagawin tayong model doon, as a model community doon. Iba na dapat, hindi na yung mga ano dito, mga... Yung mga, yung mga away-away, dapat iwanan na, wala na, iwasan na yan. Dapat magkaisa na lang, magtulungan. Yung ibang NGO yung nagsalita, hanggang salita lang, wala namang gawa. Parang puro lang sila, puro lang sila pangako-pangako. Kaya nung pumasok nga yung urban port, tinignan muna namin, baka na naman to, puro pangako din naman to. Pero nung nasubukan namin, nung sinabi nilang may proyekto kami ganito, sabi mo, sige, pwede mag-project kayong ganyan. Nung nakita namin talagang pinursyo talaga nilang gawin yun, ah, parang totoo to. Tapos nung hiningi nila yung tulong namin, talagang napatunayan namin na pagkakatiwalaan to kaysa dun sa ibang NGO. Along with Helen, my, my fellow geologists, we'd always ask ourselves, do you want to live in this place? And I guess for the lot that we selected, yes, I would like to live in this place. This has a very good aura, no? and uh, this place has a very good potential. When we brought the beneficiaries to the site, that's exactly what they experienced. I mean, you have a nice view of the sea, and then you have very cool breeze uh, running through your body. A lot of them just sort of wanted to stay there and I was telling him, oh, let's go home, let's go home, it's getting dark. But they were just standing there and at that brief moment, they felt how it feels like to own something that is very precious or that piece of land ideally is reserved for uh, high-end subdivisions. And there you have uh, victims of Yolanda, there you have fishermen, poor people who will now who can now own a piece of land that is usually a piece of land that is owned by rich people. So this yellow here are the uh, 
for spaces for the livelihoods like local market or any kind of uh, livelihood they want to put up as long as it's in the uh, side the road for easy access from other communities. And this is the main road and then they put the chapel here. It's actually an ele elevated part so that once you enter the site it's the focal point, the chapel. So this represents the houses or the lots. The community prefer like a quadruplex house. So we uh, put it this way for them to show, for them to know that it's quadruplex design. Which is ngayon yung PFB na, yung uh, Francisco. Yung pag-select kasi ng beneficiaries, kailangan active ka sa OWA. Kailangan may savings ka. Kailangan uh, marunong kang mag-garden. Kailangan nandun ka, kasama ka sa livestock, rice enterprise. Yun ang ano ng proseso ng pagpili ng mga beneficiaries. Pero meron din ano doon sa Urban Development Housing Act na kailangan puri sa dapur ka, ka Pilipino ka, wala kang wala kang may aring lupa kahit saan dito sa Pilipinas kailangan wala ka. In August 2015, hopeful that construction will soon begin. Development and Peace and its partners hold a groundbreaking ceremony for the Pope Francis village which also includes construction of an extension to the local elementary school.
while we did uh, buy this you know, almost 13 hectares of land, we said at the very beginning that it's also government's responsibility. So we, you know, the people uh, have been also trying to engage the government to make a contribution. And luckily, we realized that at the beginning when we were starting to, to plan the, uh, the, the new community, the new, the new village, we found out that uh, the terrain is uh, not friendly. There were many slopes, and that would cost us another millions of dollars to do just the land grading and land development, the cut and fill. So we're able to, you know, it took some time for the government to respond. That's why there was a, a big delay, you know, uh, almost uh, six months delay for the you know, president even to sign that two-page document for the release of funds. Because what we're trying to do is not just to build back better, but also for people to bounce back better because there will be another disaster because of the climate change that's happening. Since we were able to submit all the documents that they require, we thought that it will start by December. So they, we thought that all the heavy equipments needed will come by December, and then there was none. Also the DSWD, uh, they said that the funds for the houses are, are ready for giving to the community members. But as of now, they still have many requirements that the organization needs to comply. So. That's one of the setbacks for the project. When the project is like almost in a standstill, some, although there is a progress, but not the progress we want to, so we were questioning, is this going to continue? Even the community are asking us, um, architect, when will our houses be constructed? And we are also like, we don't also have the answer <laughs> because we are waiting for the land to be developed and we don't know when will that be because of the late support of the government. What the government has accomplished, I think uh, it's less than 1%. You know? They've only spent uh, less than 50% of uh, the funds that were uh, allocated for the Yolanda Hayan survivors. Uh, people were getting impatient no, because it was a long process of consultation. Uh, there was a temptation even uh, at the beginning to say, well, uh, why don't we just hire a contractor? And then no, they will come in, build uh, the houses. As we saw, you know, as we witnessed in many, many of this uh, housing that the government and the humanitarian organizations have constructed, uh, they're, you know, people are abandoning them. There is also the, the sense of uh, people are now confident. You know? the, the amazing thing that I saw is not to see the, the new school, the new houses, but the confidence of the people, the, the self-esteem, the, the community that was created. Uh, I was really touched in one of the discussion, in one of the sessions we had with the people. Uh, they're, they're still mourning you know, with the loss of their husband, their, their friends. And they said that we lost many friends, we lost uh, our husbands, but we found new friends in this community. Opo nga kuno, mga kabataan, mga nanay, aadik kita yan na kayo para bisitahon ang atong ginihimo nga magiging iskoy lahat ta ha susunod nga mga tuig. Excited na ba kamong makita kung nahain ginihimo ta itong bago yan ang iskoy lahat? Tara. Mga bata, nakikita niyo ba sila? Sila yung gumagawa ng ano natin, ng bagong paaralan natin. Sinisigurado nila na 
matibay yung gagawing paaralan para kung dyan na tayo mag-aaral, kahit may bagyo pa or earthquake talagang kakayanin niya kasi sigurado yan kasi standard yung pagkagawa ng paaralan natin. Bali lalaki, babae yan at nagtatrabaho. Di na. Waray sinisiring nga, porkit babae ka, di ka pwede hit construction nga trabaho. Talaga pantay-pantay. <laughs> Gusto ko talagang maging part ng ano. Actually, hindi naman talaga ako beneficiary ng pabahay. Yung, yung nanay lang ng asawa ko talaga yung beneficiary. Kahit hindi ako beneficiary, masaya ako na naging part ako sa paggawa ng ito. Actually noon, wala, wala akong balak na mag-construction. Pero ngayon na nararanasan ko dito, masaya pala kahit mahirap kasi... nag enjoy ka sa trabaho mo, marami kang natututunan. Dito talaga ang gusto ko kasi, minsan sa bahay nga akong gumagawa eh. Siguro namin na hindi ito sub-standard na pagdawa. Dahil namin talaga ang gumagawa. Talagang mahirap na trabaho pero... Kahit mga babae kami pinapakita namin sa mga kalalakihan na kaya namin. Kung ano yung kaya nila, kaya rin namin gawin. What a man gets to do, a woman gets to do. Once the Philippine president finally signs the paperwork, the funds for the roads and infrastructure are released and construction can move forward. In November 2016, three years after Haiyan, the new school building and the first batch of houses are inaugurated. For and behalf of Scandinavian Elementary School, I humbly accept this donation. School building, the Pope Francis Learning Center with pride and honor. We are going to ensure the safety and the maintenance of the school building and of course, ensure the security of the school learners who will be most benefited of this project. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Okay, you ready? Okay, so our first batch of water houses have been finally inaugurated. 
In you, every dwelling grows in the holy temple, grant that those who live in these houses may be built up together into the dwelling places of God and the Holy Spirit, we pray. tuloy na lumalaban at uh, guma, gumagawa para sa kanilang ikabubuti, no? Uh, hindi tayo yung bida dito, kundi ang bida dito ay yung mga community na nagtutulungan, no? Na buuin ang kanilang mga pangarap buhay, no? Ang kanilang pinapangarap na buhay. Sabi nga nila, dream house daw nila to, dream community daw nila to. So, sila ang bida dito, no? Kung hindi ako nagkakamali, six units of houses Uh, tapos na tapos na ho yan, pwede na hong tulugan, pwede nang tirhan. Uh, yan, kaya ho blinis muna ng mga, na, ng, ng pare, tsaka ng mga community. Kasi importante na kasama yung community sa blessing eh. So, hindi lamang pare yung nag-bless nito, kundi yung mga uh, future uh, owners nitong mga bahay na ito nakidalo para i-bless ang kanilang uh, future ng mga bahay. Thank you. 